Panasonic buys Sanyo, Friendster also gets acquired by a Malaysian online payment company, and how to track Santa on Google Earth. It's Thursday, December 10th. I'm Natalie Del Conte, and it's time to get loaded. Facebook is asking users to go over their privacy settings and customize them. When you log into the site, it will take you through a questionnaire asking you to customize your settings on various aspects of your profile, so now you can make certain aspects public while others are private or semi-private or available to only certain groups of friends, unless you are under 18, in which case you don't have the option of broadcasting yourself publicly only to people within your social networks. This is a new way of doing things. Most of the time, social networks change their privacy settings and they apply to everyone. This is tailor-made privacy and we all have to go through the process of customizing. You should see your questionnaire soon if you haven't already. Panasonic purchased a controlling stake in Sanyo Electronics. Panasonic will buy 50.2% of the company for 403.78 yen, which is around $4.6 billion. The New York Times points out that Panasonic can benefit from Sanyo's expertise in environmental manufacturing with products such as solar panels and rechargeable batteries. This would make the two companies one of the largest electronics makers in the world. Friendster has also been acquired by a Malaysian online payment company called MOL Global. This may seem pretty random, but Friendster is not the lagging social network in Malaysia that it is in the U.S. Apparently, it's big in Asia, and the online payment company wants to use it to monetize e-commerce through the site. Look out terrestrial radio. Pandora wants to put internet radio in the car. The company discussed a plan to put internet-connected radios in all phones and cars this week at the San Francisco Music Tech Summit. You'd have to think that this will work with 3 or 4G, but I'm not exactly sure how it will look in Dash. Apparently, we'll see some of this at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. AT&T is considering incentives to get iPhone users to use less data. This could mean tiering mobile data packages in the same way that we pay for our home broadband. I recently read in The Economist that iPhone users use 50% more data than the average smartphone user. So we should be punished for that? AT&T sold us data plans that they thought that they could handle. Do we have to pay for the fact that they can't? You can probably tell I'm against this. NORAD wants you to track Santa on Christmas Eve using Google Earth. The company claims to have satellites strapped to old St. Nick and will follow him starting at 2 a.m. Eastern Time on December 24th. NORAD will also shoot footage of Santa in flight with what they are calling Santa Cams. They're claiming this will be high resolution, but it is animated video. You can find it at NORADSanta.org. Should be fun for the kids, I suppose, but I'm not familiar with the technology that lets you track things that are not real. Hope I didn't spoil anything for you on that one. Is your brain tired? Well, it could be because you consume 34 gigabytes of data per day. This comes from a new study out of UC San Diego. This is not just data download, though. It includes information that you process by watching TV, reading a newspaper, or even talking on the phone. The study found that we spend an average of 11.8 hours per day consuming information. Doesn't seem to leave much time for producing information, does it? Those are all your headlines for today, and that wraps up your week of getting loaded. Before I go, I want to wish a happy birthday to Stephen, Anakit, and Chase. Thank you for watching. I'm Natalie Del Conte with CNET TV, and you've just been loaded. Hey folks, Brian Cooley from CNET.com. Now when we check the performance of a piece of tech, we check the performance of a piece of tech. If you love videos of cars and all their high-tech and high-performance glory, check out the CNET CarTech video podcast, CNET.com slash CarTechTV.